Hello everyone, I am Dr. Arif. Uh, welcome back to the channel. Uh, we'd like to apologize for the lack of content for the past uh, a year plus. It's because of the pandemic, but now as things are starting to subside, we are definitely going to be uh, uploading more videos as time goes by. So today we are going to start with the MCQ Type X revision on the adrenal gland, the function of the adrenal gland. Okay, so let's go through the question together. The hormones produced by adrenal cortex include, this is a type X, so answer true or false. Okay, A, adrenaline, B, cortisol, C, noradrenaline, D, estrogen, and E, aldosterone. Please pause the video and answer first, and we will discuss it together. Okay, so now I have answered. So let's discuss the uh, adrenal cortex first, the function of the adrenal cortex. So we have the adrenal gland, okay, which is above our kidneys. And this adrenal gland can be divided into two parts, which is the adrenal medulla, which is the uh, inner part. And you have the outer part, which is the adrenal cortex. Adrenal cortex can be divided into three layers. And how do you remember it? It's GFR. GFR is the glomerular filtration rate, which is usually we use for kidneys. And since we use it for the kidneys, we can also use it here. Okay, it's a mnemonic that can make it make us remember easier. So GFR. G outermost is known as zona glomerulosa. So the outermost of the adrenal cortex is known as zona glomerulosa. Glomerulosa is derived from the word glomus. Glomus means ball in Latin because the cells are arranged in ball-like shape. Zona glomerulosa, as the name suggests, just like glomerulus in the kidney is round shape, this is also round shape. And the, the term itself, glomerulus, suggests that this zone produces something that acts on the kidney, which is true. Zona glomerulosa produces aldosterone, or also known as mineralocorticoids. Remember this, zona glomerulosa produces mineralocorticoids. One of the major mineralocorticoids is aldosterone, but they also produce other small amounts of other mineralocorticoids. So using the term mineralocorticoids, and aldosterone is the same. You can use it interchangeably. So what is the function of aldosterone? Aldosterone exerts its effect on the principal cells in the collecting ducts of the nephron. And aldosterone will cause reabsorption of sodium into the body and excretion of potassium into the uh, nephron, kidneys. So we excrete potassium and we absorb more sodium. Next, we move to the next layer, the middle layer, which is zona fasciculata. Zona fasciculata, the name was derived from the term fascicles, and fascicles mean bundles. Zona fasciculata produces cortisol, or also known as glucocorticoids. Remember, just as in zona glomerulosa, zona fasciculata also produces a range of mineral, I mean, sorry, a range of glucocorticoids. But the major gluco, one of the major glucocorticoids is cortisol. And cortisol exerts its effect on the sugar metabolism, all right? Basically preparing for our body for stress and alters the sugar metabolism. We will discuss this in a, a separate topic on the functions of cortisol in a future lecture. Next, the innermost layer of the adrenal cortex, the innermost third layer will be the R, zona reticularis. And zona reticularis produces DHEA, which is the precursor for the production of estrogen and or testosterone okay so based on that let's answer the question all right what else the adrenal medulla produces adrenaline and noradrenaline also known as epinephrine and norepinephrine so let's see the answers together so a adrenaline is false because it's produced in the adrenal medulla cortisol b is true produced by the zona Reticularis, sorry, zona fasciculata. No adrenaline, false, produced by the adrenal medulla. D, estrogen, true, DHEA, which is produced by the zona reticularis. Aldosterone, true, produced by the zona glomulosa, the outermost layer of the adrenal cortex. Okay, so the answer is false, true, false, true, and true. Okay, before we end this video, 
I want to address a certain amount of confusion that people have on the link between the adrenal cortex and the adrenal medulla. Okay, why is this so? Because some people ask, since the, the adrenal medulla produces adrenaline and noradrenaline, and the adrenal cortex produces cortisol, why in patients with Addisonian crisis where they don't have much cortisol in their body, cortisol is very, very low in their body, why does the BP drop? Because to control the BP, you need adrenaline, and adrenaline is produced by the um, adrenal medulla. And there's nothing wrong with the adrenal medulla. The problem is the adrenal cortex. But if there is a problem with the adrenal cortex, why does the adrenal medulla does not produce enough adrenaline to bring the patient's BP up? Why a low cortisol affects the adrenal medulla? I'll tell you how. When there is a deficiency of cortisol, cortisol is actually needed for its effect on the adrenal medulla for the conversion of norepinephrine or noradrenaline to adrenaline. Because the conversion of norepinephrine to epinephrine, the conversion of noradrenaline to adrenaline, requires an enzyme known as PNMT, phenylalanine methyltransferase. And to stimulate this enzyme, cortisol actually stimulates the production of, pro, stimulates this enzyme so that this enzyme can convert the, uh, the conversion of uh, adrenaline, uh, sorry, uh, noradrenaline to adrenaline. Hence, we can see now that when patients have low cortisol, Addison crisis, when they have low cortisol, the blood pressure also drops because the amount of adrenaline that's produced from the from the um, uh, from the adrenal medulla is reduced, and there is lack of adrenaline, meaning there's lack of vasopressor effect on the body. So that is why patients with Addison crisis have a low blood pressure and have a low heart rate due to the effects of cortisol on PNMT. So I hope that answers your question. So we will discuss more questions in the future. We will try to upload as, as regular as possible. So please stay tuned and thank you very much. And uh, thanks for all the support and all the uh, lovely likes and comments. Thank you very much. And I'll see you all soon. Take care. Bye-bye.